Wow, you're all still here. This is a long day. Is this useful for, for you? OK. So this last session is hands-on. You're going to do a lab where you're going to be using S3, Athena, Lambda, QuickSight, and Alexa. And you'll have a chance to build your own Alexa skill that you can choose whether to uh, ask a, a question in English or German. So we'll have a chance to do all of that. It'll take about an hour to do. So first, if you want to do this, you need to have a computer. You can try to do it on a phone if you're really good at typing. No, no way you can code Python or whatever on a phone. It's not going to happen. So if you would like to participate in this lab, our lovely and talented uh, staff will be walking around and giving you out these beautiful pieces of paper. And each of these pieces of paper contain a student account. Please do not use the student account to create a Bitcoin mine <laughs> or an Ethereum mine or anything else like that. If you do, it will just cut you off. But uh, this will be uh, uh, should work for uh, uh, through tomorrow night. And we'll just give you a, a, an AWS account that does not charge you so you can play with this. For those of you watching this on the internet, everybody wave to the internet. Hi, internet. Hi. On Twitch, you don't get a student account. However, if you want to do this, uh, this lab, uh, the, uh, the quick site, if you choose that part, will cost you $6. And everything else together should cost you a little bit less than one euro. So I should say uh, five euro or plus one euro. So uh, as our assistants distribute all that, I'm just going to show something fun. So those who were here um, in the last session uh, saw me trick everybody into giving me a round of standing applause. But I said, I'm going to use this for some analytics. And I did just want to talk a little bit about the new world of analytics and machine learning. Do you understand the difference between machine learning and traditional analytics? I hope so, maybe. I don't know. I, I notice not a lot of people are nodding at that. Yeah. So first of all, we used to use the term artificial intelligence. We started using the term machine learning for a very good reason. We did some surveys, and we, heard, and we found that when our customers hear machine learning, they think, OK, that's an analytics tool. And when they hear artificial intelligence, they think Arnold Schwarzenegger with a shotgun. So that's not really the image we want you to have. Traditional analytics is procedural. It's a collection of processes. If this, then that, right? If this is true, then that is true, and usually B trees of decision making. This is still a val valuable and important tool. Getting a little more sophisticated, traditional analytics should do certain sorts of statistical regression. So associating data through uh, k-means or Cox regressions or other sort of analytics. Uh, mathematical analytics. Machine learning is purely statistical. Machine learning, we don't really know the mechanism. We just do a lot of A, B testing. Is A better than B? OK, now, is this A better than this B? Has anyone ever been to an optometrist to have their glasses made? If you've done that, then you have been a machine learning node, a very slow one. I'll do that. Machine learning is useful when we have large bodies of knowledge that we can use as training data. So a classic example of this is machine translation. I have many, many millions of words in German and English that have been translated, and I can use that to create a training model so that computers can statistically determine when to use, what, how to do the translation. They don't really know what the words mean. They just know statistically this one in German is usually this one in English. What I'm going to show is doing that with a picture. So this is a tool called recognition, which is useful for computer vision. And I'm going to upload the picture of people for the previous session. So those who are not here, I just asked them to pretend they were applauding. So how do I know what's in the picture? Because we have analyzed millions of pictures. And take a look at what this came up with. It said there's a 99.1% .1 chance that there are humans in this picture. By the way, part of machine learning, you never get yes or no. You always get percentages. 
You always get what's called an inference. Also thinks there's people, persons, there's a crowd. 67% uh, chance there's a chair and that there's furniture. And if I wanted to see more, I could see other things. Interior design room. Guess this is a theater. I guess this looks like a theater. These are the kind of things it does automatically. Now, if you're actually coding this, I don't need to know anything about machine learning, really. All I need to know is I send it the picture, and then I get all this stuff in JSON coming back. So it'll just come back with a fairly simple, you know, here's the pieces and the chance and the inference score. Now, if I want to get a little more interesting with that, instead of looking at the whole picture, I might look at human faces. Because human faces are interesting things and things we're often interested in. So if I take a look at uh, this picture, this will analyze a little bit longer because it needs to find the faces. OK, well, it looks like it was able to identify about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14 faces, 16 faces in there, which is pretty good. And here's one. It looks like a face, appears to be male, gives me an age, whether he's smiling, appears to be happy, not wearing glasses. This one is smiling, but uh, I'm not getting a mood, so we can't figure out if he's happy or not. This one is clearly not smiling. Now, I can also, now one thing you might notice, you see they look a little bit demonic on the picture because of the glowing spots on the eyes. This is how you really identify a face. Because the things that don't change over your life are the location of your pupils, the edges of your mouth, and unless you get in a lot of fights, the tip of your nose. I used to do boxing as a hobby. I think the tip of my nose is not quite where it used to be when I was younger. But the pupils don't change. So I could also use this, for example, for facial, uh, anal for facial uh, rec for face comparison. So we often do that to say, is the person who just walked through the door, their face matched the face on their badge. So lots of things we can now do with fast data and quick analytics. Just thought it would be fun to show you a little about how real this is and how easy it is to do. What I'm doing right now, if I'm doing one picture at a time, by the way, it's free. So just go to the um, recognition service if you have, an, you have to, of course, have an account, and hit Try Demo. And you can upload your own pictures and play with these pieces. Plus uh, an interesting one, image moderation, which is looking for dirty pictures. And finding, you know, because people think it's really funny to put a, uh, an obscene picture as an avatar, this will find that and let you block it. So a lot of uses that we have for doing computer vision. Here I was just showing it all, uh, and for that matter, doing things like reading text that's in a picture. Or here I'm only using still pictures. You can also, with recognition, do this with motion pictures. So watch a video and say that's someone getting out of a car. So these are the kind of things we're able to do now with machine learning, none of which we're going to do in the lab we're about to do. So let's talk about the lab. Did everyone get a student account who wants one? Does anyone need a student account? OK, good. So here is a very, very, let's see. I thought I had it open. I don't. PowerPoint is great. Macintosh is great. Macintosh and PowerPoint together, yeah. So uh, please uh, open up this GitHub, which is where the lab is located. And. Excuse me? The Wi Fi password is uh, we are builders explanation point. Yeah. So, can I ask the guys back there, could one of you uh, go grab the, uh, one of the sheets with the Wi Fi passwords to help anybody who needs that? Thank you. All right, so this is where the lab is located, and this is uh, the, what we'll be going through in a few minutes. I'll give everybody a chance to get to that. I was making, as I'm making fun of uh, using Microsoft on Apple. An old friend of mine is now a vice president at Apple. I was chatting with him last week, and uh, he was telling me that some of, his pe some of the people on his team, you might have heard Apple has a new headquarters, and people have been running into the glass so hard they've been like, going, to going to hospital. And I was asking him, why are you people you know, doing that? And his answer was, you know, as it turns out, Apple doesn't work well with Windows. So, everyone able to get to that GitHub? 
So again, it's not dev day DE as shown on yours. It's DE dev day on that number. But it should just be student as the password, as user, excuse me. All right. So let me talk through what we're going to do here. And then you'll all get a chance to do it. So what we're, we're going to play with is a couple of different services. So we're going to start in this voice powered analytics. Now, one little problem. The one of the services that we're using in here is not yet available in Germany. So please make sure to set your region to Ireland. If you set it on Germany, it won't work. So we're going to be using EU West 1, which is Amazon Speak for Ireland. So the first thing to do, you can go ahead and do this now if you want to, is on that first page, you'll see these links that say deploy to AWS. Choose the EU West 1 and go ahead and run it. And that will open up a cloud formation. It will already be pre-populated for a specific S3 template. So you can just hit Next. Go ahead and let it be VPA setup, uh, five read and five write units for the Dynamo we're going to use, and hit Next. All of the options you can leave on default value and hit Next. And then when you get to the review screen, you need to acknowledge that it's going to create IAM resources. Check those boxes. And then you need to create the change set. So this is letting CloudFormation create your specific CloudFormation that you'll need to make it run. That goes pretty quickly. That'll set up some Alexa skills. And then you can hit Execute. And then you get here and you go, wait, why is it not executing? You usually have to refresh the screen to show the current status. So hit the little refresh button, and you'll see create in progress. So I'll give everybody a couple of minutes to go ahead and kick off the cloud formation. So now you're seeing true recklessness, because it's dangerous to do a live demo. It's reckless to have 100 people do a live demo. And we'll see. OK, who has their CloudFormation uh, executing? Who's having a problem? OK. All right. So for everybody out there on the internet, we're going to sign off because I could not imagine something more boring to watch than the backs of people's heads doing a lab. But you now have access to that lab too. Go and do it. Or yeah, you're on the internet. Go watch a cat video. Thank you for joining us today.